Did Jesus really predict Muhammad's coming? Because this book, by one reason that I picked up today at the Islamic tent, surely thinks so. So let's just jump right into it. So here is the claim. In Surah 61 verse 6 it says, And remember when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am truly God's messenger to you, confirming the Torah which came before me and giving good news of a messenger after me, whose name will be Ahmad. Yet when the prophet came to them with clear proofs, they said, this is pure magic. At the end of the video, I'm actually addressing this fact that they brought in the Torah into the picture that they had with them. But let's stay on topic right now. So he goes on to say, Ahmad was one of the names of the prophet Muhammad. Jesus predicted that someone would come after him. Okay, let's check it out. Even in the remnants of the gospel that we have today, Jesus is recorded to have said that God would send someone after him. John 16, verse 7. In the Old Testament, there are also references to a prophet from Arabia from the descendants of Abraham. Now, they just claim that John 16, verse 7 is saying, Jesus is saying that someone will come after him. But hold on. My Bible does not mention anyone named Ahmad or Muhammad, but what does John 16 verse 7 refer to? Here's John 16 verse 7. Nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away, because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. Now, counselor here, the Greek word is parakletos. Parakletos? Para, para. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce the word parakletos, which refers to the Holy Spirit or the counselor. Um, can you, ex uh, yeah, just, just say it for me. Parakletos. Sure. The pronunciation of parakletos is parakletos. Uh, okay. I feel like I still don't have it. Let's make sure it's not just my opinion. Are there any scriptures that back up what I said, that the counselor is actually the Holy Spirit? Well, it's good that they brought up John because if you actually go to chapter 14 instead of 16, there's clarification on what Paracletos means and what it's referring to. Let's read together. It says, But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. So again, the same Greek word is used. He's re Jesus is referring to the future where someone will be sent. And he says, but the counselor, comma, the Holy Spirit, comma, whom the Father will send. Now, remember, they, they don't call Allah the Father. The, Allah is a father to no one. Yet, what they're appealing to our Gospels is is self-defeating for them. They have no gain when they are bringing up passages that are referring to God as the Father to try and prove their point. On that note of the Father, let's go back to what the Quran says about the Torah. Remember, in Surah 61, chapter 6, it said, uh, confirming the Torah which came before me. Now, there are actually 16 passages in the Quran conf confirming the Torah and the Gospels that, that they had at the time between their hands. Now, the interesting thing about the Torah is when we look at the Dead Sea Scrolls and, and the findings of them, uh, they're dated to pre-Jesus, like before the time of Jesus. You can go and buy the Dead Sea Scrolls Bible on Amazon right now if you want, and you can actually go and check uh, what the Torah was and still is. I It's up my office. I just don't have it here right now. I could show you. I'll probably just put it right here. You can see what it looks like on Amazon. But the interesting thing about this is not only does John uh, confirm that Jesus calls God the Father, but even in the Torah, when we look at Deuteronomy 32 verse 6, it says, is this the way you repay the Lord, you foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father, your creator, who made you and formed you? You see, so here's the thing. The Quran affirms the Torah. Historical fact and manuscript evidence demonstrate that it hasn't changed even since the time before Jesus. And the Quran affirms the Torah. So, here is the conundrum that we have with the Quran. 
Do we trust historical fact and manuscript evidence? Or do we trust a man 600 years after the time of Jesus who claims and, and approves the Torah and the gospel that they had at, at their time between their hands, yet he teaches that Allah is the father to no one? So did he lie? Because clearly the factual evidence demonstrates that the Torah and the gospels refer to God as the father, even in these passages that one reason used it's demonstrated so how can they appeal to our bible when the thing that they're appealing to is destroying their quran that is the conundrum how can the quran affirm the bible yet when you look at the bible and manuscript evidence that clearly demonstrates it hasn't changed remember the quran never claims the, the bible and and the the gospel and the torah uh, were corrupted it never claims that it, the only passage it says people try to to change it uh, people try to manipulate it but it never says that the actual torah and gospel are corrupted there are 16 passages though that confirm it at the time of muhammad and i'm so glad we have manuscript evidence like the codex vaticanus the codex sinaiticus the dead sea scrolls that all confirm it has not changed back to the topic so here's the thing right when you put together a book i'm pretty sure you fact check whatever you put in it i mean if i were to make a book a quick handout uh, demonstrating what we teach and how islam gets something wrong I would do my homework before making claims. Clearly, there's lies in this book. My hope is that one reason sees this and corrects it. Like no one likes a liar. And, and, and <laughs> if they don't correct it, I guess the line stands. Without lies, Islam dies. 80% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like. You can share it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified whenever I drop a new video. If you want to support my ministry, you can go on to my Patreon page. You can buy my hats on my website. And you can also take my apologetics course. It helps you and equips you in better defending Christianity and having good and critical conversations. Peace out.